Honestly, W squared, wow and wonderful. There's so many people here, so many educa educators, entrepreneurs, investors. Thank you so much for coming to this session. And we're so excited to kind of uh, to introduce some of the entrepreneurs um, and what they're doing. So welcome to AI Supercharging Educators Teacher Tools Showcase. The first entrepreneur we're going to have present here is Rajan Sheth. He's the CEO and co-founder of Chiron Learning. Um, and it's a video lesson platform that leverages conversational AI to provide equitable access to quality education. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. And it's great to see such an amazing crowd here. Um, like, like she said, my name is Rajan Sheth. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I founded Chiron Learning. And what we're doing is we're empowering educators with AI, and particularly uh, making it such that educators can build interactive video lessons with, uh, uh, with conversational AI so that, so, so that their students have a better just-in-time experience uh, to be able to get the right information that they need. So if you can go to the next screen. So how many of you can think back and think back to a teacher who made such a difference in your life that you wouldn't be here if that teacher weren't in your life? It, you know, it's really interesting how universal that is. Almost everybody has an experience like that. And so for me, it was this person. This was uh, uh, Mr. Robert Thomason, who was my fifth and sixth grade teacher. I was a struggling fourth, uh, fourth grade student. And in particular in math, I just couldn't engage in school. And I wasn't, I wasn't interested. So Robert Thomason was the one who really figured out how to make learning really matter for me and taught me with material information that I was interested in. But more than that, he was just fun and he was engaging and he spent the time to work with me individually to get me to where I am. Now the problem is, is that that's not actually help, uh, happening as much as, as we need in regular classrooms. Next slide, please. So, What's happening right now is, of course, we're in the midst of one of the biggest teacher shortages that's, uh, that's out there. And in addition to that, so many students are behind, uh, particularly post-COVID. So many teachers are in a situation where they have many more students, and more than half of those students are uh, under grade level, particularly in areas well, like math. They don't have the ability to be able to do the kinds of just-in-time support uh, that is needed for those, uh, those students, and they're spending less and less of their time actually teaching. Next slide. So what we want to do is use AI and empower educators to be able to provide scalable, affordable, one-on-one -on -one support and learning and do this with expert, uh, expert teachers. And so what we're doing is making it such that a teacher can create an interactive video lesson that feels like a conversation. So rather than a static video, this is a video where the teacher can ask a question to the student, the student can answer the question, and then the teacher says the right thing. And I'll show you a little bit about what I mean by that and how this works in a particular, uh, a particular session, and I'll tell you a little bit about how we do it. So if you can show the next video. We're excited that we get to spend some time hanging out together today. So tell me this, which topic are you most interested in? Video games, sports, or food? Sports. Nice pick. My dad was actually in the NFL and he was a math teacher. So I know that hearing you pick this question would have made his heart so happy. Now, that is one good-looking number, if I do say so myself. And good-looking numbers make me really, really happy. And when I get happy, I like to ask questions. So, here's a question for you. How many thousands are in the number 76,001? 6. Hmm. Well, if we look closely, we see that we have six thousands here in our thousands column, but there are also some thousands hiding to the left in that ten thousands column. I don't want to get in trouble for helping you have too much fun in this lesson, so I only have one more question for this review. How many hundreds are in 76,001? 760. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. 
that's it. There are 760 hundreds in this number. The next slide, please. So what you saw in that lesson was video clips of a real teacher. And what we had the teacher do is plot out their lesson and then record short video clips for, for each, of those, uh, uh, each of those parts of the lesson. And what the, the teacher could do is plot out and say, okay, when I ask this question, here are the, uh, the misconceptions I would anticipate this student having, and then be able to record short video clips for that. What we then do is we compose this together into a conversational AI model. And when the student was actually speaking, we could interpret what they're saying, match it to the right misconception, and actually show the right, uh, the, the right video for that. And so in the end, it feels like they're having a conversation with the teacher. What's been really remarkable as we started to, teach, uh, to show this to students is that they develop this bond with the teacher. We have multiple expert teachers that they can pick from, and they're able to actually find a teacher that, that they really uh, want to learn from, and then they're able to then have these conversations with the teacher and then learn the next lesson uh, from that teacher. Um, what, we, what we're doing here, though, is we're fully empowering the teacher to have full control over this. And so we're not actually generating the responses. We're actually relying on the genuine teacher responses. And so we're trying to bring as much of the personality of that teacher to the student and in a way that is actually there for the student. One thing you noticed in the, um, in, in the session there, when the student answered the question incorrectly, the teacher was able to actually jump in and say the right thing to help that student get back to, uh, back to understanding. Next slide. So where we're starting is that we're starting by actually having a set of expert teachers provide this for fourth grade uh, math. And we're providing these interactive video lessons uh, that are there. And we'll ha we have a library of experienced teachers that are teaching this so the student can actually go and pick uh, where, uh, wh who they want to learn from. But what we're also now doing is a couple of things. One is that we're, we're making it such that the teacher in the classroom can get a progress report. So we're actually generating data. We're following this conversation, and we're going to understand more about why a student is not understanding a particular area. And we can give that back to the classroom teacher to give them a, a better view of what, the, what should they be doing, uh, what should they be doing next. On top of that, we're now building out uh, tools for teachers, for any teacher, to go and create these. And so um, having it such that they can simply go and create one of these videos and have, their, have themselves be able to be in front of their students or in front of other students uh, as well. Next slide. So with this, what a teacher really gets is that they have a set of competent, skilled teaching assistants that they can turn to to provide that just-in-time support where the student needs the help. They also are able to provide that extra help for students who need it the most. And so particularly, for example, if you have a student that is below grade level, you can be able to provide this as, as a support um, in a way that is a lot easier and a lot more cost effective than, than having to bring in a tutor at that time. And down the line, they'll be able to go and create and modify lessons on their own and then also get these student, uh, student progress reports. And so it would, be like some, it would be something where they can interact with it more and be able to, uh, be able to build more uh, on top of this. Next slide, please. And for a student, they can choose from multiple different teaching styles. They can find the teacher that, that, um, that they would learn from best and then have these interactive videos uh, to be able to, to, to learn from these teachers. What we really are focusing on here is conceptual understanding. How do we actually teach them a concept that they may not understand, and how do we do it in a way with, with the video and with visuals to make it such that they can get to mastery of that particular con uh, concept? But then also, how do we do this by building their confidence and doing this with empathy and kindness? And that's really where the teacher videos are, are really critical in, in this process. Last key thing is that we want to provide a safe place for, for students to make mistakes. And so what you'll see in our videos is that it's OK for the student to make a mistake, and then we'll help guide them uh, along in the process and get them to, to where they want to be. Next slide, please. So we're just getting started. We're a team of experienced technologists and also experienced educators with decades of experience in the classroom 
starting to pull all of this to uh, all of this together and we really want your feedback we want you to try it we want you to give us feedback we want you to build on top of it and so we would love to engage with you and have you join the conversation with us so you can sign up to try this at chiron learning uh, or you can visit us at booth number 229 and and try out chiron learning on your own and then we can tell you more thank you very much it's great to talk to all of you Forgive me, it's a little hard for me to step up on this platform. So I'll just uh, uh, announce the next person from here. We have Rakaya Brown. Um, she manages Partner Success for TeachFX, a tool teachers can use to get feedback on how they're teaching. And can we? Oh. Can I get help with uh, putting these on the right screens? Or if I, okay, here we go, perfect. Did you know that there are six decades of research that shows those who participate more learn more? If you're talking more in class, you're going to learn more. But guess what percent of class time teachers talk on average? Mm, I heard a mmm. Feel free to shout out your answers. 80%, 75%, 70, what else? 50%, 33%. Yeah, a lot of answers. Research shows that teachers talk nearly 80% of class time on average. That doesn't leave nearly enough time for students to grapple with big ideas and share their thinking. Research also shows that students from historically marginalized backgrounds, think multilingual learners, students of color, and students from low income backgrounds benefit the most from speaking in class, but get few far opportunities to do so than their peers. And that's why we created TeachFX. TeachFX's mission is to celebrate and promote more meaningful, equitable classroom dialogue by superpowering teachers, using voice AI to provide educators with feedback on their practice. Our voice AI measures student engagement, equity of voice, and the discourse patterns in a teacher's in-person and virtual classroom. And I'm Rakaya. I'm a former teacher and school administrator and a proud product of Baltimore City Public Schools. At TeachFX, I have the privilege of working with thousands of teachers and hundreds of principals across the country as they strive to elevate student voice in the classroom. Feedback is essential to teachers' growth. Feedback is essential to everyone's growth. And at TeachFX, we provide teachers with feedback that's frequent, objective, and non-judgmental. And it's feedback about their instruction. Most data that teachers reflect on is student test data, but reflecting on test data doesn't help you change how you teach. Principals and instructional coaches rarely have an opportunity to make it into the classroom, so their feedback is infrequent, subjective, and perceived as evaluative. TeachFX is super easy to use. You just press a button. Teachers record their class, and TeachFX uses AI to analyze the lesson and give the teacher feedback. It's on-demand professional development and driven by the teacher. The game-changing thing about TeachFX is it only takes a few seconds to record and a few minutes to reflect. Here are some of the insights a teacher might reflect on once they get their TeachFX report. Talk ratios. Oftentimes, a teacher starts with their reflection experience by looking at their talk ratios. With TeachFX, you can see the amount of time that you spoke how much time your students spoke, the amount of silence, 
and group talk. We then take that same data and we visualize it as a timeline. In this view, teachers can see when they provided opportunities for students to speak over the course of a lesson. They often reference their lesson plan and reflect on what they planned versus what actually happened during the lesson. The TeachFX word cloud allows teachers to reflect on the language being used in the classroom. Are my students mirroring my use of academic vocabulary? Or are they using words to explain their thinking? I heard a wow down here, by the way. Uh, research shows that asking open-ended questions is a high leverage instructional practice. And so we show teachers all the instances when they provide students the opportunity to respond. Wait time is another high leverage instructional practice that is so hard to implement. Teachers often want to fill in the quiet moments in the classroom with their voice, but research shows that if you just pause three seconds after asking a question, it positively impacts talk in the classroom. By providing students with think time, students may be more willing to answer, and the question and the responses may be more thoughtful. Teacher uptake of student contributions is another high leverage instructional practice that we measure at TeachFX. Our AI is able to identify moments where teachers acknowledge and affirm student contributions and then move the learning forward. So let's take a listen. And so if this is a story and if stories follow arcs, then this story should follow it the arc. And so that's my thinking. Yes, Let, and let's go to that idea of the, the arc or the peak you know, you, you, were, you were mentioning that there's a, a climax or like a, a pivotal moment in this story. Maybe a moment that has a lot of excitement where you feel like something is going to happen. Well, what, what do you think is going to happen when you read this line? Moments like this foster a sense of belonging and signal to students that they are essential to the learning in the classroom. A randomized control trial study was conducted by professors at Stanford, Harvard and the Uni University of Maryland analyzing the insight you just listened to, teacher uptake of student contributions. There were roughly 1,100 teachers in the course. Half of them got our feedback, the other half didn't. Um, here's what happened with the teachers who received the feedback. Teachers improved their use of uptake by 27% compared to the control group. Students reported higher course satisfaction, rated their teachers higher, completed more assignments, and had higher academic achievement in the course and students report having more positive feelings about their future. We know that TeachFX works. A teacher simply turning TeachFX on increases student talk. Teachers often share that they are more intentional about using high leverage instructional practices so that they can provide more opportunities for students to speak. Over the course of one school year, teachers using TeachFX increase their student talk by an average of 40%. And the more you use TeachFX, the more their student talk increased. As I mentioned earlier, we work with schools and districts across the country. And our TeachFX implementations have been highlighted in major publications. In Anaheim Union High School District, our voice AI is making dramatic improvements in instruction and student engagement. And in Detroit Public Schools, they share data outlining successes using TeachFX to promote equity in their science classrooms. So, You've heard enough from me. Let's listen to one of our incredible users in Detroit, Felicia Branch. Teach FX is an amazing classroom app. And I think if used consistently, it will definitely foster, and I'm also gonna say ignite classroom conversations. The very first time I used Teach FX, I was amazed at the amount of time that I spent talking. I think as educators, maybe we're not aware that we do that. I think I was so involved in explaining the lesson, making sure that I went over all of the instructions, that it didn't dawn on me to just take a moment and be quiet, let them talk to themselves, and then follow back up to make sure they understood what I needed them to do. Because what we do want is for our students to guide their learning. We want them to guide the discussing. And as teachers, we don't want to spend all the time talking. Intrigued? Do you want to meet with me while I'm here in San Diego? <laughs> Here's how you can scan that QR code, 
Fill out your contact information or extra credit if there are any teachers, former teachers in the room. Uh, pull out your phone right now. You all have your phones in your hand anyway. Um, and shoot me a text. I'm at 410-258-2738 with your name. Um, I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks so much. Next, we have Kodos Padivada, who is the CEO of Digest AI, a conversational AI to allow tutoring at scale, cheaper and faster. Yep. Hey guys, uh, Kodos Padivada. Um, it's great to be here at the summit, and you know, had some great conversations. I mean, you guys know the sort of caliber of people that are here, and. A really great conversation starter is always, oh, is this your first summit, or how did you find last summit? And it's always like a really awkward moment for me, because when the last summit was going on, I was still in high school. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm 19 years old, and, and funnily enough, when the last summit was going on was when I founded Digest AI. Um, Digest AI was founded, in all honesty, as a tool to help me cheat on my exams. You know, COVID was happening. I wanted a, a really easy tool to help me cheat on my exams. And it started off really basic. Um, but you know, when you, as one does, when you do start a company at, at 18, the first thing you do is use a research, right? That's what the MOOCs on, on edX teach you. Um, so I went out and did use a research, and you know, I found that eight in 10 students uh, weren't satisfied with their after-school support, which is surprising. I mean, the students I interviewed were students from Dubai, from India, uh, you know, other places in Asia, and you know, these were some of the most affluent people ever, um, and they said they weren't satisfied with the support they were getting after school, and they were spending thousands and thousands of dollars. And you know, I, I wasn't satisfied personally either, so you know, I decided to flip the you know, chessboard a little bit, and I, I you know, talked to people like yourselves, educators, um, and then I saw that nine in 10 teachers weren't satisfied with the amount of support their students were getting. Um, and you know, these stats could be completely made up, but they sound great and they're probably true. Um, but <laughs> they're not made up, I, I promise. Uh, so we, we, we saw how teachers were interacting and, and how they were feeling about their classroom. Again, these were teachers at private schools. They weren't public schools, they weren't in rural areas, they were in really affluent areas, and they still weren't satisfied with the level of instruction their students were getting. They felt they could do more, they felt they could be more. Um, and up until today, there wasn't, there wasn't a solution to that. Um, so the way I thought about it was sort of the summer after high school, instead of going off to university, I got some of the smartest people in a room together. I got you know, the, the ex-director of education for Apple, the really good-looking old guy over there. Uh, I, I, I got researchers from the University of South Africa, Cape Town, um, and just put all these really smart people in a room. Um, it wasn't a, a literal room, it was a Slack channel, but it was, it was, it was great. You know, everybody got together and we started brainstorming about you know, how do we solve this disconnect? How do we provide really, really great support to students that is scalable, you know, that is cheap, effective, that can be used by anybody. You could be in California and you could be you know, in a village in India and still have access to the same level of support. Um, so I'm not too great at speaking, so we, we made a video to explain the concept a little bit better. Um, That's what we came up with. It was a, a new paradigm of learning. 
You know, today, a student has to go to a school, be in these four walls, bank on the fact that their teachers are really qualified, bank on the fact that their parents are super affluent to provide them the tuition that they need. Um, but we wanted to change the paradigm. What if, instead of having the student come to these institutions, what if we could bring the institutions to them? What if we could bring a really, really high quality teacher in their phones, wherever they are? They could be in the bus, they could be at a bar, they, uh, hopefully not at a bar, but they could be, <laughs> they, they could be anywhere they want to be. Uh, so we came up with this multimodal interactive learning oracle. It was an acronym we made up for a name that sounded really nice, uh, which is Milo. Uh, Milo is an AI tutor. It's, it's the first of its kind. I mean, everybody's heard the, the fad about AI, right? It's the new thing. It's, it's been around for a while, but it is the new thing. You know, ChatGPT, um, every EdTech company is building their own AI tutor. Our AI tutor differs in two ways. Um, first, it's got eyes and ears. Not literally, it's not scary, it's not gonna take over, but um, it can understand both voice and images. Uh, there are very few models in the world that can do this today. Um, so we're able to you know, send an image of a diagram or a piece of text, and the AI is able to understand that intricately better than a human would and provide support to the student. You can send voice notes in your local language, in a, language, uh, in a local dialect even, um, and it's able to understand that, and it's purely interactive. It goes back and forth with you exactly how a teacher would. And throughout the whole process, we're actually understanding the student as well as a really, really great teacher would. Um, so we're you know, identifying what the student's strengths are, what the student's weaknesses are, what they resonate with. You know, if they're from Milwaukee, do we make an analogy about the Brewers? If they're from Dubai, do we talk about the Burj Khalifa uh, when we're talking about architecture? So personalizing responses and over time, just getting better and better to speak to, to, speak to the student exactly in a way that they'd understand best. Um, and you know, it, it sounds great, right? It's got all these new things for, as a technologist. So I'm super passionate about it. It's, you know, all the buzzwords are there. We've sort of ticked all the boxes on the, you know, how to raise a really big seed round. Um, but then, you know, it's missing the one thing, right? The one thing that helps a student study faster than anybody else. The, the one thing that gives students superpowers. And a lot of people in the room are probably thinking about Adderall. Um, I'm talking about teachers. <laughs> Right? A really, really great teacher. You know, the power of a really, really great teacher, and everybody in this room knows this, is one that's you know, insurmountable. It's, 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 you, you can't compare it to anything else. The feeling that you have when you walk into a classroom and you see that teacher you really like that you know, talks about their childhood for 30 minutes, wastes a little bit of the lesson, and comes back to work, that, that feeling is something you can, you know, AI will never be able to replace. So today, for the first time, we're introducing Milo for schools. Uh, what we do is we take the really great systems that we've built, you know, that are competitive with some of the top AI models out there, and then we give teachers end-to-end -end control over it. So you can upload documents, your lecture videos, data about individual students, historic data about individual students, and all of this lives in the school itself, but you pretty much create this super-powered Milo that not only understands the things that we've made it understand, but understands it in a way that you want it to. So if you were a teacher studying, you know, teaching IB, you could upload those documents, upload your presentations, and the AI actually learns from that, like how a really great student would, and then goes on to become your student's teachers. And we offer end-to-end -end visibility, end-to-end -end customization, where the teacher could see every single response, every single interaction between the student and the AI, so you don't have to be worried about your students using it to cheat you pretty much have control over everything that the student does with the AI. And on top of that, we actually take all of these interactions, instead of having you having to you know, look at hundreds of thousands of text messages going back and forth, uh, you're actually able to get natural language insights. 30% of my class struggles with inflation. 40% of my class really, really loves YouTube videos by the specific YouTuber. Um, you know, 6% of my class will not understand this topic ever, and you just you know, ignore them a little bit. Um, so, so we keep the teacher in the loop in a way that you know, systems today have not done so far and give them complete visibility over it. And we've seen some really, really exciting results in research that we've done and, and you know, in small pilot groups that we ran out. 71% you know, of at-risk students claim that a tool like this would deter them from dropping out. I mean, it was, again, a very small subset, but think about the sort of long-lasting effects of that. You're encouraging people to do education because you're not trying to force the institution onto them. You're, again, bringing the institution to them. 30% of weekly teacher hours saved. That's 30% of your week to go wherever you want. Play ball with your kid, go to the bar, do whatever you want, or per provide even more personalized instruction to your existing students. And you know, the, the sort of buzzword in education, right? The two sigma theory. Um, it's, it's famous, I, most of the people in this room would have heard it. If you go out there and ask somebody about it, they'll know about it. Um, our tool makes that not just a theory anymore. We've actually, in a very small pilot group, seen that we've been able to increase grades by two sigma which means a C student becomes an A student. And the power of this long term, not just for outcomes, for at risk students, or long term to the point where you know, your students that you're teaching today, when they're 60 years old, that effect is gonna be, again, insane. It's gonna be absolutely amazing to see what we do in the next 10 years, the next 20 years, and you know, who knows if 
I'm alive and have the same stamina that Alan does the next 100 years. <laughs> so if you're interested in being one of our pilot partners, we're you know, sort of recruiting a very small batch of schools and uh, champion teachers that aren't afraid to use technology in the classroom to be one of our pilot partners for the next academic year, we'd love to chat. That's my personal email ID, qp at digest.ai. Uh, you can also find me around the, the hall. I'm probably going to be wearing the same jacket the next two days. So uh, <laughs> you can find me, have a chat with me, and we'd love to work with some schools that want to be at the forefront of artificial intelligence and education. It's not scary. We want to give control of tech revolution back to the teachers, back to the education system. It doesn't need to be a fight. It can be a, a very lovely marriage. Um, thank you, guys. Can you hear me? Wonderful. Turn my mic up. Um, it is wonderful to be here with all of you this, this afternoon. And in the world of AI, what a time to be alive. It seems like this technology has come so far in such a short in such a short period of time. And it's inspired a lot of energy around what the promise of AI can be when it comes to improving outcomes for kids. That promise as a fact, what if I told you that three million students' families have already been using this to access mission-critical help for school? That is what All Here is. My name is Joanna Smith Griffin. I'm CEO of, of um, All Here. We got started as, as a spin-out from, from the Harvard Innovation Labs back in 2018. Prior to this work, I used to teach sixth and eighth grade math. And I think that what was so frustrating to me as a teacher then was that I loved teaching my students. But one of the trickiest things was after the entire school day, so think of like seven to four, needing to stay from four to seven to do things like send emails, postcards, call parents, and try to find out what had happened to students that were not present that day. So much of that work, work that is mission critical, but also can be very, very time cons consuming, is where AI stands to make one of its best contributions. So let's take a minute or two to, to walk through how All Here does that. So what's special about All Here is that our AI has been proven to have an impact on student outcomes. Uh, there was an independent eval done from, re from uh, researchers from a uh, teacher's college that found that when parents could use AI to have very two-way, 24-7 uh, conversations with, with their school, it improved absenteeism rates by 18%. And what kinds of things do these conversations tend to cover? Once you open the door to parents, you think you're texting them about one thing. And in, and in our case, it was actually, hey, your child has missed five days of class. What you get back is a wealth of insight, question, needs. And families feel as if because they know it's not one specific teacher, right? So many of our chatbots, like, take cues of very like friendly avatars, like Alexa. Um, families feel as if there's, there's a level of candor where they could say exactly their issue, question, need, or a, a, or, or a topic of concern is, and, and uh, get the right help at the right time. One of the things that, that we have learned is that for all the talk of, a, of a AI, when it comes to families using this, it's very, very important for families to be able to access help in their language of choice. So if you're thinking about an AI model, you need to not only think about it in terms of English, but how do I meet the needs of all the learners and all, and all of their parents so that, that um, you aren't creating new equity gaps by having an English-only model. So, 
you all know at this point how an AI chat, uh, chatbot works. There is a user who in our case is a parent who texts us something. The bot analyzes the intent of, of that text and then draws from a, 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 a client-specific knowledge base or, uh, or in other words, a um, chatbot's brain to render the right response at the right time. When it comes to parents, you want these flows to be very conversational. So one of the things that folks will ask us often is, hey, if I'm using School Messenger, if I'm using some text messaging app, how is this not that? In order to have that same level of fluency and in terms of like a parent sends a text and they get an immediate answer, what does that usually take? Someone said it, time. It takes teacher time. So think of all the times as educators where you're getting texts from parents. You have to sit there and compose all these answers that sometimes are very, very personalized. The beauty of what AI can do right now is model that level of personalization in a conversation with a parent. Um, how, uh, how does it do that? It's very, very important for an AI model that that is interacting with your end user to be able to access information that allows it to render um, that, that, uh, that uh, personalized of an answer. Um, what's powerful ab about this is that I think what, what it does is that in, in all this energy and promise around AI, it's very important to think of what are evidence-based examples of school systems that are using this right now? Um, so, so, so for all here, how we do that is 24-7 help and support for, for parents that they access in their language of choice over text that uses AI to do that work. And, the, and in those conversations, parents are doing things like um, advocating for their child, asking questions, communicating high expectations, and the beauty of this is that when you think of traditionally how schools think of what it means to, for a family to engage, those models usually involve a family having to physically show up, right, to a meeting, to a back to school night, to a parent-teacher conference. And what that means is that oftentimes as a field, we have very different ideas of what family engagement look, uh, looks like that's really just measuring who can physically show up. So when you take the model of what family engagement means and expand it so that it meets every family where they are on their phones, right? So six, so in the K-12 field, 6% of parents open emails. So those emails you're sending, they're not reading those. Um, when it comes to mail, 40% of parents will open those. And you have to think, you know, from an equity lens, how does that impact students who are frequently, uh, whose families are frequently uh, mobile, right? Um, by meeting families where they are on their cell phones and trying to cull some of that work of responding to those texts off of the teacher's plates, there are examples of school systems that are achieving outcomes right now that span absenteeism, grades, and really what the quality of that customer service and family in, uh, uh, in engagement path looks like for them. Um, so we pulled a like, quick example of, of, just that, of just the level of like candor and like personalization and warmth that can happen over text. What's beautiful about this is that it's used primarily with families, there are some very like bleeding edge school systems who will also, you know, extend the question, how can this then be used to support kids, right? Um, so, so it is possible to think of implementations as either focus on family or kids, depending on your context. Um, when I think about what all here's mission and vision and goals are, it takes me way back to kindergarten. So I grew up in Miami, Florida, um, uh, and my earliest teacher was a fiery woman from Puerto Rico named Ms. Judy v uh, 
Valentine. And what was so powerful is that my family immigrated to the U.S. about a year prior to when I was born. And we oftentimes think of schools as a matter of fact, but schools are institutions that families have to have the efficacy to know how to navigate and how to get the help and support that they actually need. Ms. Valentine's warmth created such an environment that my family that came to the US with, with, with not much other than, uh, than, uh, than the belongings on their backs, it created an, an, an environment that although we lived in a zip code that, that was high poverty, they never felt less than. And, we think, and when we think about the quality of how we invite families to partner in the critical work of schools, so much of, 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 of that promise lies in how are we making families welcome and how are we meeting them where they are. So at all here, we think about that work is taking the best of what family engagement can, can uh, look like and do and making that available to every family, no matter your race, your income, your zip code, with a discernible evidence-based impact on student outcomes. Um, and with that, last but not least, and short and sweet. Thank you all so much.